Most of the time, players who get voted into the All-Star game by the fans or the coaches, it's fairly accurate the majority of the time. The players who make it are usually the ones who deserve their nomination, but occasionally, we do see some selections that are completely whack, and based solely off reputation. One example is Michael Jordan's 1985-86 season, where he only played three games leading up to All-Star Weekends, but he still got selected. But MJ did show up in the playoffs that year and dropped 63 points on the Celtics, so you can't say he wasn't an All-Star in 86. Before the 2016-17 season, the NBA always let the fans decide the starting lineups, so the players who got the most votes were guaranteed to be an All-Star starter. However, starting in 2017, the voting process changed and it only allowed fans to get 50% of the vote, while the rest falls in the hands of the coaches, players, and media. Ultimately, this process has been better because it reduced the number of outrageous selections. Additionally, there are other times when players don't deserve it simply because the numbers they put up were not that good or maybe there weren't enough good players to choose from at their position. In this video, let's take a look at 10 NBA players who did not deserve their All-Star selection. Number 10, Kyle Korver, 2014 to 15. The 2015 Atlanta Hawks had four All-Stars, tied for the most All-Stars from one team in a single year. While he was a huge part of the team's success, individually, there's no way he should have been selected. In the games leading up to it, Korver averaged under 13 points a game, although his shooting ability was ridiculous that year. I'll give him credit for that, but even Korver himself stated, That had never ever been on my radar. I don't really consider myself that level of player. It was an unbelievable experience for me, another thing in my career that I never could have imagined. The coaches selected him, but it seems to be more of a product of how good his entire team was as they went on to win 60 games. I mean, the entire Hawks starting five even won the Player of the Month award. Like, seriously? That's even more ridiculous. Number 9, Don Buse, 1976-77. Buse was a solid point guard, an aggressive, hounding defender for most of his career. But he should have never been considered an all-star. In that season, he would average 8 points and 8 assists along with 3.5 steals per game. While the steals and assists are not too shabby, the pace of the game was much quicker back then. It's natural for numbers to be higher. Now, I wasn't alive in the 1970s, but from studying the decades, the 70s were quite weak from a talent perspective, especially in the backcourt. It was also the first year of the ABA-NBA merger, and the team he played for, the Pacers, were brand new to the NBA scene. The coaches, who formerly coached in the ABA, now had a voice in selecting the reserves for the NBA All-Star Game, and ultimately, they wanted to show their support for Buse. Number 8, Vladi Divac, 2000-2001. Throughout his career, Divac was always a great starting center, put up some very good numbers in his best years. But by 2001, it was quite obvious he slowed down. His numbers dropped significantly, and he was only the fourth highest scorer on his own team. The Kings though, they made a significant jump from the previous season, so team success had a lot to do with it. Averaging about 12 points and 8 rebounds, he was the injury replacement for Shaq, and he was quite out of place. This would be the only All-Star selection of his career, and it's weird cause he deserved it more in his earlier days with the Lakers. To see him get it at the twilight years of his career, it was quite weird. Number 7, James Donaldson, 1987-88. His lone All-Star appearance, Donaldson averaged a whopping 7 points and 9 rebounds a game. But this is the story behind it. According to Jeff Wade of ESPN Dallas, the reason for his selection was way more than just his box score numbers. Quote, He wasn't one of the best centers in the league, but his presence shored up a massive weakness and helped the Mavs become one of the league's best teams. This dude was 7'2", 280 pounds, and greatly filled the Mavs' need at center. 
Keep in mind, this was the same year when the Mavs were one game away from reaching the NBA Finals, and the importance of Donaldson showed greatly in the playoffs. Number 6. Jamal McGlure 2003-2004 Statistically, he was better than most players on this list, but he's here due to the sheer shock factor. Nobody thought McGlure was an all-star caliber player. Before and after this season, he never matched this production again. That was likely because this was his contract year. He was playing for a massive payday, worked much harder than other years of his career. Luckily for him, he was awarded with a 3-year $25 million contract. Just from looking at it, his numbers were pretty good for a center, over 13 points and 10 rebounds a game, but besides this season, he never lived up to his all-star status again. Number 5, Roy Hibbert, 2013-14 I do recognize that Hibbert anchored the Pacers' defense, but the 2013-14 season was the start of his downfall. His selection was a product of the Pacers having a phenomenal year, clinching the number one seed, and despite his lackluster numbers, he truly was a game-changer on defense. The Pacers did have the number one defense in the league, largely due to Hibbert's massive defensive presence. Looking at the other front court options that year, it was kinda rough. There weren't that many great front court options who deserved it either. In the playoffs that year, Hibbert's all star status looked even worse, as he recorded multiple games of zero points and zero rebounds. Of course, afterwards, his career fell off a cliff, one of the worst falloffs in recent NBA history. By 2017, he was out of the NBA. Number 4, Allen Iverson, 2009 to 2010. From 2000 until 2010, Iverson made the All-Star game for every single season. While there were other seasons when he definitely should not have been voted in, the 2009-10 season was the most egregious, by far. He only played 25 games by the All-Star break, 28 games for the entire season, yet he was voted in as a starter for the Eastern Conference. Obviously, at this point, the voting still relied on the fans 100%, it's obvious why he got voted in. The critics were plenty, and Iverson got his fair share of negative remarks about how he did not deserve this election, and that he should not attend All-Star Weekend. To those critics, he responded, The way I look at it is, what should I do? Should I worry about what those people say or concentrate on the million plus people that voted for me? To me, it's a no-brainer. My fans want to see me play and they have the right to put in who they want to put in the game. And you know what? He's absolutely correct. He was still incredibly popular, the fans still loved him even though his game fell off. This was also his final season in the NBA and even though he didn't formally announce his retirement, we all knew his career was coming to an end. The All-Star nomination was the last hurrah for the iconic superstar. Except, he was injured and did not even participate, so that sucked. Number 3, Kobe Bryant, 2013-14 Six games. That's the number of games Kobe played during the entire 2013-14 season. This entire season was an awful, injury-plagued year for him. Kobe spent most of his time rehabbing the Achilles tear he suffered in the previous season, and while he was trying to make a comeback, he suffered a left knee injury in December, which ended his season. That makes this selection look even worse because everyone knew he was out for the entire year. It was a complete disaster, but obviously Kobe was still Kobe. Similar to the vein of Allen Iverson, Kobe still got easily voted in as a starter. But unlike AI, Kobe knew he did not deserve it that year. And it was this selection that prompted the NBA to change the all-star voting process in the near future, which they eventually did. Number 2, Yao Ming, 2010-2011 Instead of 6 games, Yao only played 5 games and still got nominated. It's no surprise why, I mean, he's arguably just as popular as Kobe and AI, what happened was, in the beginning of the season, the Rockets said that they would limit Yao to only 24 minutes per game. 
Previously, he sat out the entire season due to a hairline fracture in his foot, so coming back was a tough task. But the Rockets were hopeful that Yao could recover. Unfortunately, that experiment failed. This time, he suffered a stress fracture in his left ankle. November 10th, 2010 was the last game Yao would play in the NBA. And at number 1, Grant Hill, 2000-2001. Hill played 4 games that entire season, but for those who watched him back in the day, you would know that he was the most popular player for a long time. In fact, as a rookie, he made the All-Star team while finishing first in votes. That was the only time in history a rookie led everyone in All-Star voting. Fast forward to 2001, after multiple injuries and multiple surgeries, despite all of that, Hill was still so popular that he still got voted in. Anyway, that's all folks, that sums up 10 former All-Stars who did not deserve their nomination. Of course, many of them were actual All-Stars for significant parts of their career, but in one particular year, maybe it was just a legacy admission. Other players seemingly made the team completely out of nowhere, and then quickly faded away into obscurity. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, can you name any other players who did not deserve their selection in certain years? Let me know in the comments every player you can think of. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope y'all enjoyed the video, and of course, as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.